Hello, Bino here, and thank you for checking out my video. Please, if you like what you hear, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It helped me out a ton as I'm trying to grow my channel. Okay, so let's dive right into this thing. Today I wanted to talk to you about Alchemy and the Burning Crusade. This is going to be a big one, so I'll put timestamps in the comments below so that if you want to reference something later, you can find it easily. I'll also put a copy of the slides in the comments as well. Okay, so what are we going to cover today? We're going to start with the basics of alchemy. And then I'm going to dive into training and skilling up. After that, I'm going to cover the three specializations so you have a good idea of the route that you might want to go. And lastly, I'm going to go over where you can get all the new TBC recipes. Why alchemy? Alchemy is a great all-around profession, and I feel like it is one of the most underrated professions in the Burning Crusade. Being an alchemist, you will be able to make all of your own potions and flasks along with transmutes that are great for high-end crafting materials. Alchemy is also going to be great for making some good gold. Flasks and potions may end up being overall cheaper in the Burning Crusade than what they are now in Classic, but the volume that people will be using flasks and potions is going to be a lot higher. And you can't forget the Alchemist Stone. As a healer, it's a godsend. The extra mana alone from mana potions makes it worth it. But later on, you can upgrade it into some really good trinkets for every spec. Okay, these are just some of the perks of Alchemy, but now it's time to get into the meat of this guide. The first thing you're going to have to do is train. You'll be able to find your trainer in your faction hub in Hellfire Peninsula. For the Horde, you're going to need to find Apothecary Antonievich. He's in the tower at the top of the hill in Thromar. And for the Alliance, you need to seek out Alchemist Gribbly. He's in Honor Hold in the tower west of the keep. As a side note, your trainer is going to sell some recipes that you're going to want for skilling up, which I'm going to cover in a later slide. But really, if you're like me, just buy all the recipes because you're going to want to fill out your recipe book anyway. Also, if you've already leveled up and made it to Shattrath, you can train from Lower Keem in the Lower City. Once you've hit up the trainer, now it's time to start skilling up. As you start out, all the recipes you're going to need are trained from your trainer. From 300 to 305, there's only three recipes that you can get to level up with. They are Volatile Healing Potion, Onslaught Elixir, and Adepsal Elixir. Each one takes one Old World Herb and a Fell Weed. And they can carry you all the way to 315 before they go yellow. At 305, you can pick up the Elixir of Major Strength if, you're going, if you've got some Mountain Silver Sage laying around. At 310, you can get Unstable Mana Potions, and at 325, Super Healing Potions. For me, this is how I would normally do it. 300 to 310, I would go with Volatile Healing Potions. They're great to have in your bags, leveling up, and Golden Solomon is cheap, and if you're like me, you have some just laying around anyway. Then at 311 to 325, I would change over to Unstable Mana Potions for the same reason. They are good to have, leveling up, and you can find Rag Veil everywhere in Zanger Marsh. From 326 to 340, I would do Super Healing Potions if you can get your hands on some Nether Bloom. But this may be hard er in early TBC because it's only found in Nether Storm. If you can't get Nether Bloom, you can do any mix of elixirs you have learned from your trainer. When you make it to 340, you're going to want to start making Super Mana Potions. You will want to make mana potions from 341 to 355, and you can get the recipe from Howrun and Zanger Marsh for Alliance, and Dara and Blades Edge Mountains for the Horde, but then you have some choices to make. If you want to make your Alchemist Stone as soon as possible, you can start making the materials now and get levels up off of them. But they do have cooldowns, so if you only level off the transmutes, it will slow your overall leveling down. What I would do and what I suggest you do if you want an alchemist stone is pick up the recipes for the transmutes as soon as you can and keep them on cooldown, get skill ups off of them when you can but don't sit and wait for them. I have the locations for where you can get all the recipes listed in a later slide so you can easily find them when you need them. Now this is how you're probably going to want to skill up. At 341 you're going to want to start making super mana potions. They will turn green at 355 but there is not very many options in this range. Just try mixing in your transmutes if they are up and making whatever you can get your hands on. If you are doing a lot of dungeons and you can get your hands on some ancient lichen, you can mix in elixirs of major defense to help you get to the 360 mark when they will turn yellow. The reason you want to push mana potions so long is 1. The mats are easy to get and 2. 
because they will be used so much. Boss fights are going to be longer, so healers will be using a lot more mana potions. Once you get to 362, mana potions will gray out on you, and you will have to do the rest uh, with something else. The real goal is to get to 365. At 365 you can make everything but Shattered Sun, Alchemist Stones, and the Flask of Chromatic Wander. The Alchemist Stones will not be available till Sunwell and the Flask of Chromatic Wander is just not very good. So I guess what I'm trying to say is get to 365 and then just level up making things that you need. Flash, Transmutes, Raid Supplies, and you'll be at 375 before you know it. Alright, but if you can't wait, you can make Major Dreamless Sleep Potions all the way from 360 to 375. Specializations. New in the Burning Crusade, there are three alchemy specializations. You can only choose one and you can only have one at a time. Each specialization gives you a chance to create extra of whatever you're crafting if it falls under that specialization's category. The categories are potions, elixirs including flasks, and transmutations. No matter which specialization you choose, the quest to start your mastery training will be found from your master trainer in Hellfire Peninsula, and it requires you to have an alchemy skill of 325 and a level of 68. The first specialization is Transmutation. The Transmutation quest is the easiest quest to do, but it will also cost you the most. To become a Transmutation Master, you will first have to travel to your faction's hub in Hellfire Peninsula and talk to your trainer and pick up the quest, Master of Transmutation. Once you have the quest, you will have to travel to Netherstorm and find Zerhive in Storm Spire. Zerhive was going to ask you to bring him four primal mites. Not a hard task, but one that will hurt your bank account early on. Once you give him the primal mites, you will become a transmutation master. The next specialization is potions. This specialization starts the same as the transmutations in that you have to go to Hellfire and get the quest to start the chain. Once you have the quest from Hellfire, you will need to go to Cenarian Refuge in Zangamarsh to see Lorana Tharawell. Once talking to Lorana, she's going to send you the Botanica to kill High Botanist Fairween and collect the Botanist Field Guide. Once you have the Field Guide, you will need to bring it and 5 Super Healing Potions, 5 Super Mana Potions, and 5 Major Dreamless Sleep Potions back to Lorana and she will make you a Potion Master. The last specialization and my personal favorite is elixirs. Once again, to start the chain, you will have to go to Hellfire and pick up the quest Master of Elixirs from your trainer. For part two, you will be heading to the lower city to find Lord Keem. After you've talked to Lord Keem, he's going to send you to the Caverns of Time to collect 10 Essence of Infinity from Black Morass. The Essence dropped from the Rift Lords and Rift Keepers, so make sure you're looting before you run to the next portal. Once you have all your essence, you will need to take them along with 5 elixirs of major defense, 5 elixirs of mastery, 5 elixirs of major agility, back to Lord Keem, and he will make you an elixir master. Alright, so, my final thoughts on specializations. First off, they can all be good depending on what you want to do. I personally like elixirs best because it is just really nice to proc extra flasks. Even though flasks will not be as expensive as they are in classic, making an extra 40 to 100 gold on a craft is just nice. And you can sell a lot more flasks in the Burning Crusade than on classic because it becomes more of the standard for raiding instead of only on parse weeks. If I have a second alchemist, they will 100% be a transmutation master. This is harder to see the effect of transmutation specialist day to day but when you proc an extra primal might on a transmute it is super nice overall i feel like potions are the least profitable unless you're making just a mass amount of potions every day to sell the last part of this guide is your recipe book what i've done is collected every recipe you can get in the burning crusade and group them by how you get them and the level you can learn them the first recipes are from the trainer one thing to note that the Mad Alchemist Potion was not added until patch 2.3, so it will probably not be available at the start of Classic TBC. Next is Vendor Recipes. I listed out everywhere you could buy each recipe to make it easy to plan out where to go next. And the second page of Vendor Recipes. Now we have Reputation Recipes. First up, Scenario Expedition. The big one here you will want is the Transmutation Earthstorm Diamond. Also, if you were not able to pick up the old flask recipes during Classic, 
They are now available by rep from Burning Crusade factions. Something to keep in mind because these flasks can still be very strong in TBC. Here are some more rep recipes. The big one here is your Alchemist Stone from Shatar Reserved Rep. This is one you're going to want to get ASAP if you're a healer. I can't tell you how many times it saved me in car early on when we're all in bad gear and it just makes surviving that boss fight so much easier with the extra mana. Next up on reputations that you're going to want to keep an eye on is honor hold for your sky fire diamond transmutation. And the last of the rep recipes is the shattered sun alchemist stones. These will not be available until some will patch but they are pretty amazing trinkets for some classes. The next two slides are recipes that drop from specific mobs in the world. On this slide are recipes that drop from dungeon bosses. One to really keep an eye out for is the Iron Shield Potion from Old Hillsbrad. It's one that tanks are going to be using a lot of. The last of the world drops. A random world drops. The bane of every crafter. If you can get them, they're great. But I just remember it took me almost all of the original TBC to get my hands on that Mage Blood Elixir recipe. The last type of recipes are discoveries, and they are broken up into three groups. The first group is discovered when you are making flasks, elixirs, or potions, and they contain all of the new flask recipes. The second group contains all of the primal transmutes, and you can learn these from doing other transmutations. The last set of discoveries are cauldrons. Each cauldron has 25 charges. You can discover a cauldron by making the protection potion associated with that cauldron. So for example, to learn the arcane protection cauldron, you would need to make arcane protection potions. So that brings us to the end of my Burning Crusade Alchemy Guide. Thank you for spending your time with me and if you liked the video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. I have a lot of TBC content planned and in the works. Thank you again. This is Bino signing off.